In our last video, we introduced accounts receivable. And we talked about the real challenge of accounts receivable being the fact, from an accounting perspective, that we don't always get our money. And the, the fact is, because of this matching principle, we can't wait until our customers don't pay us to record a bad debt expense. If I record a revenue in one year, I need to record its related bad debt expense in the same year. But the reality is, we don't always know which customers will pay and which ones won't at our fiscal year end. So at our year end date, we have to learn how to make an estimate for our bad debt expense. In this video, I'm going to walk you through an example of using the income statement method, also called the percentage of sales method, for making that estimate of our bad debt expense. In the next video, we're going to learn the balance sheet method, also called the aging of receivables method, uh, to do the same thing, to estimate our bad debt expense and this new account we're going to introduce called the allowance for doubtful accounts. So let's walk through this example and I, I think it'll become a little bit clearer as we go. I, I hope so anyway. Um, so I've, I've uploaded this. Uh, there should be a link right beneath the video uh, to, for you to download the problem if you want to have it in front of you. Uh, certainly you can probably do it on the screen uh, along with me though. Uh, so question number one. On December 31st, 2012, Chang Inc.'s unadjusted trial balance includes the items below, and they've got an accounts receivable. They've got an allowance for doubtful accounts, which I'll talk about kind of what that is in a little while, and some sales, and that's just some selected uh, accounts. There's a lot more accounts on an un unadjusted trial balance, as you'll know, uh, but those ones are the ones relevant to this question. It says the company's accountant estimates bad debts to be 1% of credit sales. And in brackets, it tells you that because we're taking a percentage of sales, we do the income statement method. The income statement method, I think, is the easier of the two, but I actually prefer the balance sheet method. I think it's a little bit more logical. Um, okay, so it says record the required adjusting journal entry based on the info above. Show accounts receivable would be presented on the December 31st, 2012 balance sheet, given the adjustment and requirement A. Okay, fair enough. We'll do all of that stuff. So... Uh, the first thing I want to figure out is it says the company's accountant estimates bad debts to be 1% of credit sales. Well, what is 1% of credit sales? And I guess to start, i got to know what credit sales are. I see sales are $1.1 million. And it says in brackets that there's cash sales of uh, $250 thousand dollars so where are my credit sales well if I sold 1.1 million dollars worth of product during the year and 250,000 of that was for cash straight away for cash the rest must have been on credit so my credit sales here is gonna be my sales minus my cash sales so it's gonna be 1.1 million I'm using a different pen here and it's looking a bit odd. I hope it's legible enough on the video. 1.1 million minus 250,000. That's 850,000. Now, again, it says the company's accountant estimates bad debts to be 1% of credit sales. So I just take my credit sales at 850,000 and I multiply by 1%. 850 times 1% is 8,500. Now uh, I've got my my estimate based on what the company's accountant said. Now in my class certainly I'd never make students make up this number. I would always provide them with a number like that. I would say the company's accountant estimates bad debts to be a percentage of credit sales or 5% of accounts receivable or something like that. Anyway whenever you get a percentage of credit sales or a percentage of sales you're doing the income statement method. Uh, and what the income statement method says is easy. The amount you calculate here, 80, 850,000 times 1%, this amount is your bad debt expense. So this is your bad debt expense. And so this amount gets plugged right into a journal entry. So on our fiscal year end, that's December 31st, I'm going to debit bad debt expense for 8500 I'm going to credit my allowance for doubtful 
accounts again for 8,500. So at this point, I've got a good journal entry and I'm all set. Now, regardless of what method we're doing, if we do the income statement method or the balance sheet method, this adjusting journal entry is always the same. Debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. So if you're ever in a situation where you have to estimate bad debts based on a percentage of sales or some aging of receivables, some sort of a percentage of receivables, your journal entry will always uh, include the same two accounts. Debit bad debt expense, credit allowance for debt flow accounts. You might use different terminology. You have to read your textbook. Sometimes they call it uncollectible account expense, and I've seen allowance for uncollectible accounts. You might have that word or some other word, but the journal entry should take that same form. Uh, so in this case, we've got debit debt, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Um, okay, so what I want to do is I want to update my allowance for doubtful accounts T account. So I'll just call it the allowance in the T account. Uh, and let me scroll back up. I started with a $12,000 allowance. So let's start with a $12,000 credit to allowance. I've credited it $8,500 and that's it. So I end up with $20,500 in my allowance for doubtful accounts. Uh, okay, fair enough. I have a $20,500 allowance for doubtful accounts. Beautiful. Now, I actually should have uh, explained the second part of the question that says show how accounts receivable would be presented on the December 31st, 2012 balance sheet given the adjustment in requirement A. Well, what receivables uh, look like on a balance sheet is a little bit like what a um, long-term or capital asset looks like. We have our receivables, which is an asset, in this case $77,000. Then we have this account called the allowance. And this account, just like the uh, accumulated amortization account, if you're thinking back to your earlier chapters, uh, this account represents a contra asset. In other words, it sits with your asset, but it works against the asset. Basically, we're saying we have $77,000 in accounts receivable. This allowance for doubtful accounts is our estimate. Remember, it's an estimated amount. Uh, the account estimates bad debts, and that creates this allowance. Uh, so it's an estimate. Uh, and this is the estimate for the amount of the accounts receivable we don't think we're going to collect. So at the end of the year, we have this estimate, this allowance, sitting at 20500 So on my balance sheet, I'm going to have accounts receivable of 77000 just the amount from the question. I'm going to have an allowance, and you might have to write the whole thing out. You would in real life, but I'm going to save my hand here and just write the word allowance. 20500 and my accounts receivable minus my allowance equals my net accounts receivable. So 77,000 minus 20,500. I don't want to get this wrong on video, so I'm punching it in the calculator. It's 56,500. Okay, so on my balance sheet, typically, this is the number that I would present to my shareholders. So if you look up your favorite company, if you Google your favorite company, you look at their financial statements, they're not giving you their gross accounts receivable. They'll tell you their net accounts receivable, and then they'll, they'll show that AR and the allowance probably somewhere in the notes to the financials. But what does it mean? It means the 77000 is legally owed to me, and these represent legitimate accounts receivable. But I know, based on experience, that not every customer pays the bill some customers won't pay. So I estimate that of the 77,000 I'm owed, 20,500, that's actually a really big amount, isn't going to come in. So how much do I really think I'm gonna get? 56,500. Well, if I only think I'm gonna be able to collect 56,500, that's what I need to tell my shareholders. I'm not gonna tell them I'm gonna get 77 grand if I don't think I can get it. So on the financial statements, and that's what the question asks for, it says, show how accounts receivable would be presented on the December 31st, 2012 balance sheet, given our adjustment. Uh, 
well, this is how it would be presented. I'm legally owed 77 grand, but based on past experience, not everybody pays. So I know I'm, I'm probably not going to get 20,500. That's based on my manager management estimate. Uh, so here's what I really think I'm going to collect $56,500. Again, the bad debt expense and the allowance consequently are based on management estimates. They're not perfect numbers. They're never going to be perfect numbers, but, uh, that's our that's our best answer and that's our best estimate. So this was called the income statement method. And again, the income statement method, you take a percentage of sales, in this case a percentage of credit sales, 1% of credit sales in this question. That number you calculate as a percentage of credit sales is your bad debt expense. And it goes straight into a journal entry. Debit bad debt expense for that number. So Always, always, always remember if you're doing income statement method, percentage of sales method, the amount you calculate is your bad debt expense. It goes right into the journal entry, debit bad debt expense for that amount. In our next video, we're going to learn the balance sheet method, and you'll see the amount we calculate is actually something entirely different. So that's why there are two different methods. So we're going to take a percentage of accounts receivable or an aging of accounts receivable. We're going to calculate a number, and it's a different number. It's not our bad debt expense. We'll save that for the next video, though. That's all for this one.